Like it's easy to say, like, just move, you gotta take the action. Sure. But a lot of people still, despite understanding that, intellectualizing that, are unable to, you know, basically act as if. Yeah, I think we're dealing with two general categories of people who have problems with motivation and focus. I think we failed to describe the fact that there are two groups and not one. We think, well, I need to calm myself enough to move forward. I think, and then other people say, well, no, you need to kind of ramp yourself up to move forward. Here's what, the way I conceptualize it based on the data that I'm aware of. Some people are just hypo aroused. They're just not motivated enough. And those people would benefit greatly from cultivating practices like super oxygenated breathing. Mm -hmm. So this is something along the lines of like Tumo type breathing. So rapid, and we look at this in the lab, we're actually running a human study on this now. So 25 or 30 deep breaths through the nose and out through the mouth, then exhaling the breath and holding, learning to how to self-generate adrenaline. That's what you're doing yeah, when you're doing some that. Some version of the Wim Hof yeah, technique. Or that's what, what that is. Brian McKenzie talks about. Right, a, a, an ice bath is doing the exact same thing. Stimulating adrenaline response, it, it actually improves the immune system. There's a mm -hmm. published paper on this, releases adrenaline, which buffers the immune system against infection. But getting good at taking yourself from low, low energy to higher energy, and then learning how to compress your focus. And I'll talk about the focus thing in a minute. Some people are so agitated, the monkey mind, they got too many things going on and they're thinking, okay, they're trying to sit down and write. I suffer from this and I'm feeling like, wait, I've also got this person I need to connect with and I'm kind of dr being drawn off course by not being able to put the blinders on. For people that have that issue, I think learning how to calm the nervous system is very powerful. And the best way that I know how to do that is based on two studies, one published in Nature, one published in Cell Reports recently, showing that physiological size, there's actually a thing in the literature called physiological size, are one of the fastest ways to bring our overall levels of autonomic arousal down. And a physiological sigh is a two inhales followed by an extended exhale. So it's like, it's not just a deep breath, it's two inhales, followed by an exhale, mm -hmm. okay? And then what that what that does, and this has been shown several times now in humans and other species as well, is it dilates the, the little sacs of the lungs and that second inhale dilates them a little bit more and it pulls a little bit of carbon dioxide out of the bloodstream so that when we exhale, we offload the maximum amount of carbon dioxide and it perfectly adjusts the ratio of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the bloodstream and lungs. And sometimes it only takes one of these double inhale exhales, sometimes, Somebody needs to do two or three. But that's the fastest way to bring the autonomic nervous system down. A lot of people need such a tool because I think we talk a lot about meditation and tools for calm. And you know, I can go to Esalen for a weekend and get a massage, I'm gonna feel very good. But then when I'm thrown back in real life, I need something that's gonna work in real time, what I call a real time tool. The diaphragm is real time control over your brain state. So, the brain knows what the body is doing by how fast the diaphragm is moving. It knows yeah. its overall activation state. So when you breathe quickly, those 25 or 30 breaths, the brain says, oh, I must be alert. I'm gonna start secreting some noradrenaline. And when you breathe slowly, that level of noradrenaline drops down. 